All right, folks, uh, I'm going to go over sort of what the project is big picture wise. Uh, I'm not going to go into any great detail on any one thing, um, but hopefully paint a picture of sort of where you're headed and what you'll be doing in this class and with your team. Uh, please refer, feel free to refer back to this if you need help trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Um, first of all, this class is taught differently than probably a lot of your other classes for a lot of different reasons. Um, where a lot of classes, including the earlier wellness classes, was a lot of content-based and having you sort of memorize things, um, bits of information, so you can make knowledgeable decisions and informed decisions. This one is kind of where it all comes together and um, you're gonna learn some content about a particular topic. And when you watch your classmates' presentations, you'll learn about those topics as well. But really we are through that content or through your topic, we are trying to teach you some skills that you'll have with you for the rest of your life. You can see some of those listed on the right, okay? Um, so for example, developing creativity. You're gonna have to be creative when you come up with uh, activities for the class to do when you're presenting. You may have to be creative to figure out how to engage a teammate more if they are sort of checking out or seemed uh, seem like they're not very involved, all right? They're not participating or maybe they're not sharing their ideas. Uh, you may have to be creative uh, trying to come up with a solution to your problem, your essential question, all right? And it's it's by failure and trying things and having some work, have, having some not work, that you're going to get better at these skills. Uh, so the lens that we kind of take is a general um, public health lens. So we're not looking at how these topics affect one person. We're looking at how they affect the larger population, all right? Uh, so it's a little different lens than the, a lot of the things that we look at um, in health, but it's a, it's a good one. And when you're trying to solve major problems that affect major populations and numbers of people, it's probably the best lens to take a look at it. All right. Um, so as you may or may not know, at this point, you'll work in groups of four to five people. You're going to read articles, studies. You're going to look through websites that are going to have great information, ideas about even solutions. Uh, you may watch videos or listen to interview, audio interviews, etc. cetera. You're, you're actually going to interview uh, two or three professionals that are actually working in your field or in that field of your issue. Uh, so there's a lot of things that go into it, which is why we spend so much time doing research. Okay. Uh, if you feel like you ended up with a topic that you already know a lot about, that's fantastic. Spend this time to learn even more. All of these topics we could talk about for at least a semester um, by having an expert in the room. So take your base knowledge and build off of it. Go into even more depth um, and more information about it. All right. At the end, your group will make a presentation. Uh, you will also create a video, make a video and show that video during your presentation. At some point, you will survey Eastview students about what they know and think uh, about your uh, topic. Um, you're gonna write to legislators about a bill that is related to your topic and ask them to vote a certain way. Um, and then you're gonna present all this information to the class uh, the last couple, two, three weeks of the quarter. All right, and ultimately you will answer your driving question or your essential question, whether that's on opioid, how do we prevent opioid abuse or how do we prevent suicide? Um, how do we prevent human trafficking? Uh, how do we design communities better to uh, increase or better people's health um, who live there? Lots of great questions and problems to solve. All right, so you may be wondering how you get put into the groups that you will end up in. Um, well, there's the form, and you may or may not have already filled this out, but where you get to give some input about your interests and uh, people that you think you would work well with or not work well with, and I will do my best to take that information, meld it with the information that I learned about you uh, in the first few days of class, and try to get a good fit. Um, ultimately, it is a numbers game. If there's going to be four or five people in a group, I can only have so many groups. Um, and I can't have a group of six and a group of three, uh, just so I can get a couple different people together that has to be put together. So trust me, I spend a ton of time and I do my best um, and just make the most of it. Uh, I've actually had students who have said that I should put people in groups where they don't know anybody. Um, I think that would be hard for me since I don't know who you know, uh, but they've had, I've had students who have had fantastic experiences uh, being in groups where they didn't know anyone, 
uh, and some of them have made friends. Some of them actually became college roommates. Um, and some of them just had a really positive experience and then parted ways. Uh, so regardless of the group you end, it, end up end up in, um, just make the best of it. Get to know those people um, and form a relationship because you are working towards the same goal. All right. All right. So the list of topics may change depending on what the top things are that are sort of affecting large populations of people and their health. Um, but overall, you're going to see really the topics that are affecting people's life expectancy, quality of health, um, as it relates to preventable death or injury and illness. All right. So things like heart disease, cancer, strokes, intentional and unintentional injuries, mental health, addiction, um, and or other diseases as well. All right. So what exactly are you going to research? I think that's a legit question that you might be wondering about. Uh, and so let me tell you, um, it kind of is broken up into some, a few different categories. You, you're going to need to teach the class about your topic. All right. And so uh, we start out with some background information. Let's take a look at the history. Let's look at some maybe a timeline of some major events or changes related to your topic. Uh, how about some statistics? How many people does this affect? in Minnesota, maybe even in Dakota County, um, in our country and in the global uh, aspect of things. All right. Uh, you're looking for multiple statistics. I'm thinking probably anywhere between four and six uh, significant statistics. All right. To sort of paint a picture of how many people and who does this affect? Does it affect certain genders, races, socioeconomic um, status? You know, like what age groups? Um, who is affected by this and how many folks are affected by your topic? Uh, teach us about the vocab, all right, as it relates to your topic. If you got a topic about addiction, I would assume you would tell us what addiction is and what different types of addiction are there. And uh, how do you know? How does somebody know if they're addicted? Well, what type of withdrawal symptoms, et cetera, et cetera. So find the vocab that's related specifically to your topic and teach us, uh, again, four to six, five, six different vocab words. Facts and myths. There are a lot of myths that surround all of these issues. Um, some of them contribute actually to making these issues even worse than what they would be without them. That is for sure. Uh, and so set us straight with that. Get out there, find three or four myths um, surrounding or related to your topic and, and let us know what's actually going on. What We might think one thing, but what do we need to know is actually the truth. All right. Then the next category is major and most important concepts. Um, the best way I can explain this is these are big parts. These are big parts of your topic. Uh, so, for example, if you are teaching us about preventing sexual violence, I would think a major concept is teaching us how to intervene as bystanders for when we see something that concerns us. All right. If you are teaching us about some chemical abuse or addiction uh, related topic, you've got to teach us about the brain, right? How is the brain? What is the what's going on with the different parts of the brain? What's it responsible for? And then how does addiction, how do those substances play a part? How do we get addicted? What does that do to our brain? How does it change it? All right. If you're teaching us about uh, suicide prevention, one of the major concepts would absolutely be signs and symptoms, things that we if we were to see, we should act on, we should tell an adult, or we should talk to that person um, and address the situation. What are the red flags to look for? All right. Those are major concepts. They're going to take some, it's going to take some explaining and some teaching on your part to get it across to your audience. It's not going to be a one or two sentence deal and moving on. Uh, next category, what's happening now. This is going to include current events uh, and studies. This would include the Eastview data that you get by surveying your classmates. Um, this would include what legislative bills are out there right now related to your topic. Just like maybe two as compared to current events. We're looking at, again, four or five studies, just maybe one or two. Um, and then who's out there that's currently working on the issue? If it's such a big deal and affects so many people, who's out there trying to do something about it? All right. And then the last category is what can we do? Um, what are some apps that people could install on their phones to help with this issue, um, either by helping protect them or helping actually solve or get money to 
um, the good, you know, good organizations, et cetera, et cetera. And when I say get money to, I, I'm thinking of some global health ones where uh, for every maybe a mile that you walk, some company donates money um, to a certain organization to help feed folks that are starving. Okay. Things like that. Um, otherwise things to help protect them against uh, that issue. So nutritional apps or um, therapy apps apps, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Also individual actions. What can everybody in the room do right now that could help either themselves or someone that is affected by your issue? And then the last thing will be those solutions, your answers to your essential and driving question. All right. And then I'll talk about it later, but you're actually out of your four solution ideas. You're going to pick one that you would say that your group thinks is the best one of the four. All right, I'm not going to talk uh, about this slide as much as just give you uh, a minute to read it. All right, this is, these are bits of advice from students who have taken this class that have come up time and time again, quarter to quarter to quarter. These are the things that multiple students share when I ask them the question, what advice do you have for next quarter students? All right. And then sometimes in class we have time to actually, I will film your presentation. Sometimes we have time to go back and watch that. Um, don't worry about it. We uh, actually probably won't in this class. We're really strapped on time. It's a shorter number of days. Uh, but these are, I think, some good things for you to come back and visit this slide before you present. These are things that people said after watching themselves present. Uh, I'll give you just a minute again to uh, read through of some of them. Good for any public speaking that you might be uh, asked to do in a class, I think. Okay, so once you get started, where should you start? All right, on Schoology, there is a folder called Group Project Info. This is where pretty much everything related to the project is, okay? Uh, your most important link in this folder is going to be the tutorials and the grading rubrics. Okay, um, we'll take a look as a class at the grading rubrics, um, but everyone, and I'll give each group a printed out version, but um, everyone has access to this 24 seven in this folder. Uh, the tutorials, fo tutorials folder really answers the question of how do we do this? How do we do that? It gives you a bunch of directions and specifics. Another great folder or link is the extra resources and current events. That link gives you, I have found a bunch of really good websites for each of your topics that, you know, a lot of the organizations that are working towards solving problems and stuff related to your issue have a website with really great resources. Um, so that's there. Also, I get sent an email, what, once or twice a week on public health events. And so any of those articles that might be related to some of the topics we talk about, um, I put a link to there as well. All right, the other great place you can find current events and studies, okay, 
uh, is if you go to the Eastview High School Learning Commons page and you go to up at the top where it says writing and research, and then there are two search engines that I think work best. First one is Gale Topic Finder, um, and that's kind of visually really cool because uh, you can type in the topic and it'll kind of show up as big piles um, to break it down a little bit into more specific areas of the of the bigger topic. Um, and then you can click on that and that'll give you the links and the resources. The other one that I really like is the student resources and context in the under the references section. Um, and I like this one because when you type in um, a phrase and do it differently, drinking, alcohol, use, abuse, binge drinking, teens, adolescents, like learn to flip and use different words to get different results. Uh, but when you do that in the student resources and context page, it categorizes all the results. So if you're looking for a study, you can go to studies. If you're looking for a news article, you can go to news article. They've got videos and they've got audio segments, um, which are also fantastic sources. All right. It does not have to be a written article. It could be a radio interview with, you know, the author of some study or something like that. All right. So those are great resources. That's where you will find the information that you need for pretty much anything related to the topic. Okay, and here we'll end with uh, my sort of advice to you, okay? Things that you're gonna wanna sort of set up with your group right away and talk about right away, okay? Uh, regardless of who's in your group, make sure you get everyone to share and agree to what you will find acceptable, all right? How will you contact each other when you aren't in class? If I'm absent, do I reach out? Does my group mate send me a text um, and say what they've worked on and what they would like me to work on? Do I reach out and say, hey, I'm sick today or hey, I've got an ortho appointment today. You guys send me a text of what you want me to work on tonight. What do you guys want to do as a group? And then make sure, make sure you get some sort of group messaging um, situation set up. All right. Next, how will you handle team members absences? Okay. Uh, once you get to five, what does that mean? If somebody gets to five, that's more than being, you know, being gone more than once every other week. All right. Um, what happens if it's more than that? Okay. How are you going to handle that? What do you feel like is acceptable uh, and what is not acceptable? Okay. Is any number acceptable if they text you and check in and come back the next day with work done? All right, so maybe there isn't a number, but there's a set of expectations that are attached to that absence. All right, uh, how are you going to divvy up work? Okay, uh, you know, some groups, everybody, you just work on one thing at a time. Everybody's working on it. It doesn't take very long to get done because everybody's working on it, and then everybody's knowledgeable about it. All right, anybody could talk and speak to it during the presentation because you're all familiar with it. Or are you going to have two or three people do this, two or three people do that? If that's the case and they're not overlapping, how are you going to get that other group to know the information that you just learned? All right. Do you take 20 minutes every week to catch everybody up and go over everything that you've sort of researched and want to use? What are you going to do? All right. Have a plan. Uh, and how are you going to go about addressing someone who may not be meeting expectations? All right. Whether that's they're on their phone when they're not supposed to be, uh, whether it's they're doing homework when they should be working on this class, uh, absences, um, they're just not engaged. OK, they've got their head down, whatever it might be. How are you as a group? What's everybody OK with? Like, hey, call me out. All right. If I don't if I don't say something to you guys, and I'm having a tough time or that I I'm super tired today. Like you need to call me out. All right. Is everybody OK with that? If so, what's it going to look like? Okay, talk about it. Makes it so it's not awkward if you are in a situation where you might need to do that. Um, I know in the past, sometimes folks who have been in Bravo have sort of let some things slide with their group. Okay, very different if they're in communication with their group and they're doing things outside of class. Um, very different situation if they're not, if they're just so tired from not getting any sleep for however long um, and they're not doing anything in class or outside of class, all right? What are you gonna do? Uh, regardless of who is in your group, make a social connection as soon as possible. Get to know them, ask them about the classes, uh, if they have a job, ask them about that. Co-curriculars, try to connect in some way, all right? 
even if you don't have that thing in common, just ask them about it. Get to understand that part of their life. The class will be more fun. The whole project will be more fun. Um, I can't tell you how many groups uh, after the quarter is done come back and say, I really miss this class because I miss my group. All right. Um, they maybe don't miss homework or doing, you know, doing work, but they miss that sort of social interaction with their group. All right. The more connected your group is, the more positive experience you're going to have, the more enjoyable it will be. All right. Uh, always, always, always have at least two people working on every aspect of the project. No one should be doing something alone, ever, all right, ever. Um, and get your interviews scheduled early and with really good people that you feel like you can learn from, all right? The better, more experienced that person is, more they know about that your topic, the better that interview is going to be. It is a great opportunity and a really cool opportunity uh, and those of you who get great interviews uh, will understand what I mean. You'll know it when it's happening. Lastly, use your class time wisely. Use it every single day. All right. I cannot stress that enough um, to help prevent you from being stressed out. Uh, the groups that use their class time when, as it's coming closer and closer to when you're going to present or when things are due, uh, those groups just aren't stressed at all. They feel good. They feel confident because they haven't tried to cram a bunch of stuff in a short period of time. All right, so use your class time uh, and contribute. Contribute, contribute, contribute to your group. Try to be a leader, try to be helpful, be kind to each other. Uh, some of you like to lead and like to control everything. Let some of that control go, all right? Let people in your group, help them shine, help them do well, help them contribute.